If you've been working in design thinking for any length of time, then the chances are that you will have either seen or worked with an empathy map, uh, which is one of the standard design thinking tools. It's an awesome tool and um, it's a fantastic way of giving you insights into how people think and how your stakeholders are moving, what makes them tick. Now, if you haven't or you haven't looked at them in a while, then can I recommend that you go and have a look at uh, gamestorming.com where the original empathy map is. Dave Gray, who designed the original, has recently updated it with new questions and slightly different segments to make it even better. So please do go and refresh your memory or your skills by going back to source. If you'd like to take it even further than that and make it a little bit more wicked or put a more wicked spin on it, then I have a whole bunch of extra tips and tricks for or suggestions for going even deeper with this tool because there's so much you can do with it. Um, and I've published them in a free design thinking ebook, design thinking tools ebook, the details of which are down below. Um, now, in the meantime, I thought it might be useful to have a look at what are some of the things that, some of the common mistakes that I see people making when either um, we're teaching, I'm teaching it in business school, or whether I'm working with people inside of organizations on a project. And there are a couple. So even by correcting these or twisting these around, you're gonna get a lot more out of the tool as it was designed to be used. Now, the first thing is to remember that the point of doing an empathy map in the first place is because you're hunting for insights, you are looking for insights as to what makes a person tick. You know, what's their point of view? What is the world? What does the world look like from their perspective? So uh, you, you've got to get it very clear clear that when you're putting things up, you're not just doing it as an information holder, you're doing it to find the patterns, you're finding the paradoxes, the conflicts, the, the reinforcements, anything that works together to give you an insight. And that it's not about getting it right, it's about sparking a conversation with your colleagues or whoever you're playing with at the time. So it doesn't matter if you agree or disagree, that's, that's the joy of it, is that you get to have the conversation and it's sparked by doing the map. The second thing is that you'll notice, you'll, you know if you've been working with them, that the first things that you do after defining the goal are go through the sensory pieces. So what is somebody seeing? What are they hearing? What are they saying? What are they doing? And then a little bit more abstract, uh, what are they thinking and feeling? Do these first and do them one at a time because the whole point of those is to warm you up into getting into somebody else's perspective. So. Do them and keep them sensory, keep them tangible rather than keeping them abstract. So don't say, um, oh, they're seeing that um, the marketplace is escalating and blah, blah, blah. So, you know, what are they actually seeing when they walk around? Are they seeing people that are happy? that are sad? What are they seeing people doing? What are they hearing? Are they hearing people complaining? Are they hearing people get really excited about something? What, you know, what, are, they, what are the actual sensual inputs? Uh, and keep them distinct rather than letting them bleed into each other. So that's a really good discipline to force you to be very specific to this person's experience. Um, I say this person, which brings me to the third mistake that I see people making, which is it's got to be about a person, not a group. When you do a group, I mean, which you can do, of course, because you know, design thinking tools, there's no right or wrong, it's whether it's useful. But if you do a group, the tendency is to generalize. So if you do the marketing department, then you're covering Fred, who's really excited about the new project, as well as Jillian, who really isn't excited, and you're neutralizing that. So you lose a chance for insight, and that's what the tool's for in the first place. You're much better doing a number of different empathy maps and then looking for the patterns between them. So don't do it for a group, do it for a person. That's why there's got one person's head in the middle. Um, that brings me to, uh, the projection that people make. So 
the tendency is, because we don't always have, I mean, you know, you're doing a bit of mind reading for a pile of this. You've got to be aware of that and just be really upfront and honest about it, because it doesn't matter. It's just about usefulness. But if you're going to project your own assumptions onto that person, then declare it. Either put a big A on the sticky note, and use sticky notes, by the way. Either put a big A next to the point that you're making or a question mark. If you're assuming that the person is upset about the changes, but you're not sure, or you're just thinking, well, that's how you would respond, then put a question mark and go check it if it's important enough to. But, but don't project your own stuff on them just because you haven't got details and facts. Highlight it instead and go find out. And finally, uh, the tendency when we're doing these things is to slip into corporate speak, to start using business jargon. And at that point, remember, you're trying to trying to connect with somebody else's reality. And that's really about heart. Uh, business jargon is neck up. It's about the head. So uh, don't define somebody's goals as being they want to maximize the ROI on the capability uplift they're getting because that's just meaningless nonsense and it doesn't speak to what's actually motivating them and that's what you're trying to get to is what's motivating them what's driving them what's making them do the things they do and decide uh, on the choices that they are making so use real language you know pretend you're you're telling your nana or your 10 year old kid that you know use real words and real language that a human would speak to another human so instead of uh, I, the maximizing the ROI ROI on the capability uplift. It's how do they get them? They want to make sure that they get the most out of the, the training that they're giving people or that they want to get the most out of the, um, out of the time they're spending helping people be better or whatever it is, but make it human and make it meaningful. So even if you just avoid those common mistakes and just get really conscious, that's like a hygiene piece, you will automatically get more out of the empathy maps that, uh, that you're doing. And if you want more still with heaps of tips and tricks about things that you can do and other things that you can add in and move around, then do download the free ebook, uh, Design Thinking Tools, uh, from my website or from the link below. Thank you.